I'm here at Government House at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst outside London where the French President Emmanuel Macron has just been holding talks with the British Prime Minister Theresa May about defence and immigration, of course in the context of Brexit. After those talks were over I sat down with President Macron to discuss those issues but also France's role in the wider world with China and of course with President Trump. <laughs> Mr President, we're sitting here at Sandhurst at the heart of British military culture and you've just come to a new military agreement. Can I start by asking you what you've agreed with Theresa May? We agreed a series of cooperation. Cooperation in terms of capacities on future projects uh, like the FCAS. I mean new capacities for uh, new weapons in the future which represents um, very uh, uh, huge investments, but it's very much important because we have this very strong relationship in terms of defence. That's a bilateral relationship, and nothing this, to deal with sorry, Brexit. Is this because the Russians are tooling up with new weapons all the time and there's a threat from the East or what? No, not just the threat from the East. I mean, we have a series of security issues. Obviously, we have I mean, security issues coming from the East, but we have to deal with Middle East with, um, in Africa, the war against terrorism. And that's why we decided this cooperation in terms of capacities and in, 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 in the service of new weapons, because that's very much important from a strategic and operational point of view. We decided uh, on our side to commit ourselves in 2019 for cooperation in Estonia, uh, in the framework of NATO. So that's a series of very concrete cooperation, cooperation. on the short run, because we have the same vision of security and collective threats. Let me ask, if I may, about the wider picture. Do you think it's possible, in Theresa May's words, for Britain to have a deep and special relationship with the EU after Brexit? I do hope. I do hope. Because I think it will be good for the EU and for for UK. She said a deep relationship, however, if the UK is, I imagine your view is, if the UK is not going to be a member of the customs union or the single market or accept the four freedoms, it can't be that deep. Look, it will be by definition less deep than today because the, the, the deepest re possible relation is being a member of uh, the European Union. So I think you have to be, you have to be lucid okay. and, and you have to be fair with people. As you decided to leave, you cannot be part of the single market. But in function of the na nature of the negotiation, you can have some deeper relations than some others. For instance, we have a deeper relation with Norway than the, way, the one we have with Canada. So it depends on the, on the outcome of this negotiation. But for sure, uh, except if you change your mind, but you, you will not be part of the single market uh, you will, as you will not be part of the European Union. And in concrete terms, let's talk about what that might mean. So, for instance, there are a lot of people in this country who say, well, not much of the British economy is actually directly trading with the EU. That bit of the British economy could diverge, but bits of the, the British economy that are trading with the EU will converge. In other words, we could have a sophisticated, bespoke deal, especially for Britain. Now, you've said in the past you can have Canada, or you can have Norway, but you can't have your own special deal. Is that really fair, given how long Britain has been No, part it's not a question to be fair or unfair. Uh, I take that as a reference, but for sure you will have your own solution. And, and my willingness... And so that will be a bespoke special solution for Britain? Sure, but you will, I, I take these two references because um, this, this special way should be consistent with the preservation of the single market and our collective interests. And... and you should understand that you cannot, by definition, have the full access to the single market if you don't tick the box. And, and to get full access to the single market, you need contribution to the budget and you have to accept the, the freedoms. The freedoms and the four pillars, and you have to accept the jurisdiction. As soon as you decide not to join these this preconditions, it's not a full access. So it's something perhaps between this full access and a trade agreement. But what is important is not to make people think or believe that it's possible to have... Uh, Your cake and eat it. Exactly. 
So when I talk to David Davis, our main Brexit negotiator, and I say, what does Britain really want out of this, David? He says, we want Canada plus, plus, plus. And by plus, 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 he means a deal on services because so much of the UK economy is based on services <coughs> in general and on the city in particular. Um, from what you've said today, I, gu I guess that you don't believe we can have any special deal involving the city. I mean, you don't just speak about services, but you speak about financial services. Cooking a deal is a job of Michel Barnier. Uh, we have a very dedicated organisation. I don't want to start a negotiation country by country. It will be ridiculous and the best way to dismantle the whole EU. Uh, I think what we have to do and what we will do is first to take the decision in March regarding the mandate we want to give to Michel Barnier to negotiate. After what, he will have to negotiate with your negotiator. And, and they will decide, and it depends on proposals made by, by the UK, but for sure, Full access for, for financial services to the single market is not feasible given the functioning of the single market. So by definition, it's not a full access. So in concrete terms, some form of passporting deal is off the table in these negotiations as far as you're concerned. I'm not the one to negotiate and I, I don't want to close no, doors, but it depends on what you're ready to, to put on the table in terms of precondition. If you respect the precondition to get access to single market, it's feasible. But there is no cherry picking in the single market. I mean, if, if I have to wrap up the, the full philosophy, no cherry picking in the single market. Because it's not feasible. Because otherwise, that's the, dis that, that's the dismantling of the single market. And for me, it's one of the pillars of the European Union and something you loved in the past. And you, and you say that you're, you're, you're not negotiating, and that's absolutely right. But when you went to China, for instance, you were very much saying that one of the consequences of Brexit, you thought, was to reaffirm uh, Paris's centrality in the financial system. And France has made a very, very strong pitch to British financial institutions to come over to Paris. How is it going? Look, uh, in China, I didn't speak about Brexit. And, and I didn't, I would say, push any message because of thanks to the Brexit. Uh, uh, I, I fully disagree with this idea. Why? Because I think that for China, as I look at Europe, and we have to be very much coordinated. And we are, we are linked and we are closely linked on nuclear and a series of topics mm. very, very much important for both of us vis-à-vis -vis China. Second, uh, in, uh, uh, in terms of European dialogue on financial services, but for sure, for sure, uh, we want to attract the maximum activity. Why? Because this decision has an impact for a lot of players. So a lot of players will decide to be part of the EU and the Eurozone. Mm. And they have to choose between different countries. So there is a competition between different of countries. Of course there is. The, the, the case, and, I and, suppose... And, and you had this decision regarding the regulator. As you leave, you, you lost this regulator and, mm. and it, will, it will come to birth. I suppose the case for the city is that it has built up a very big part of the whole global financial system. And to unplug the city from the rest of the European financial structure is a big risk and a danger. Look, I think, first of all, I, I, it's absolutely not my willingness and I think not a reasonable perspective. Second, it's something to be taken into consideration by your negotiator and, and your own proposals. But my willingness is not to, precisely to unplug, as you say, uh, uh, the British city. I think it doesn't make sense because it's part of the whole fin financing of our um, European Union. But for sure, if there is no change in terms of full access to the financial single market, it doesn't make sense for the other. So uh, I want to preserve what we created post-World War. And, 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 and what we created is this sophisticated organization called the European Union, which is for the very first time not an hegemony of one on the others, but a very concrete, democratic, economic construction. Why do you think the British voted to leave this sophisticated structure? Look. I'm not the one to judge or to comment uh, the decision of, uh, of your people, but my, my interpretation is that a lot of losers of this new globalization and this new system suddenly decided that it was no, no more for them. You always take a risk when you, when, you, when you have such a referendum, just yes or no in a very complicated context. If and France some... had had a referendum, it might have had the same result. Yeah, probably. Probably. 
in, in a similar context, but our context mm -hmm. was very, uh, very was very different. So I don't want I don't want to uh, to make any. <laughs> I mean, to take any bet, but <laughs> but uh, I I would have de definitely fight, fought very hard to win. Um, but I think it's it's a mistake when you would just ask yes or no when you don't ask people how to improve the situation and to explain how to improve it. That's why I do believe in these conventions we will organize to as better associate people. But as, as for the Brexit vote, my understanding is that middle classes and working classes, and especially uh, uh, the, uh, the oldest in your country, decided that the recent decades were not in their favor. And that the adjustments made by both EU and globalization, because for me it was a mix of both of them, was not in their favor, which means what? First, it's not sustainable to have an unbalanced organization. It probably, when I look at your debate, it was too much favorable just for the city and less favorable for the rest of the country. So I'm very much... But surely it was about Europe as well and, and, and the and structure second, of Europe. And second, I think one of the reasons was precisely an organization of our European Union probably which gets too far in terms of um, freedom without cohesion, with, to, towards free markets without any rules and any convergence. And I have to say that your governments had some responsibilities in it. So I too, remember too ten, neoliberal perhaps. But ten years ago, ultra liberals on totally f and, and, and purely free market without re any regulation. Because uh, all your people saying the Hungarian workers or the Polish workers are much, much more favored than I am, it was exactly the debate we had in France 10 to 15 years ago against some directives that a lot of your governments pushed at that time saying, guys, you are not free market. I'm, I do believe in free market. I do believe in, 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 a, in a market economy. But we need regulation and convergence, which means that what we lost in the recent years in Europe, that's a convergence and solidarity message. It's no more sustainable to have some countries taking cohesion funds, taking money from the Un European Union in order to converge and using this money to diverge, i.e. to reduce their labor standards or to reduce their corporate taxes. So that's why... So you have, Sorry. To interrupt, Sorry. your vision seems to me to be deepening Europe as a response to this. You, you want a single <coughs> financial minister over a whole thing, more European taxes, more done at the centre. Again, is that not a terrible risk, given no. how many European people look at this and say it's too far away already? It's, no. I, I don't feel like engaged Because in it's not just my view. I think what we need is, is, first of all, to have a much more protective Europe. From the very beginning, I'm totally dedicated on making our Europe more protective to our people. So what I do believe is that first, Europe should not mean just adapting yourself when you are part of working classes or middle classes. But the best answer is we have collective risks and threats. Europe is something which will protect you on digital, environment, migration, collective security and a fair organization. But my I would say, on the mid to long run view of Europe, is the following. I, I do believe that we have a European Union. We will be unhappily 27. But Inevitably? Definitely? I mean, it's on your own. It depends on you. I, I mean, I do respect this vote. I do regret this vote. And I would love to welcome you again. I, I, I can say... Your, but, vi your vision but of, my of, vision, a, to be of, clear, of a different Europe. So, my, my vision, on the very short run, be much more concrete, less bureaucracy, and more concrete and so to protect people and address their issues and our collective future, concrete end. But we have to prepare for me a new organization, which should be or could be the following. We will, we, we will be 27 at the EU level. For me, the mid to long run perspective, by definition, is to, to gather some countries within or in strong cooperation with this EU, let's say, but it will enlarge precisely to be an actual counterpart so of, of a second Turkey, Europe outside. Turkey or Russia. I don't know if it's through cooperation or joining this EU, but this EU should have a pillar of single markets, common values and rights to be defended. That's the first, uh, the first circle. 
and a series of inner circles on different policies. So based a multi-speed Europe. But by definition, it's yeah. already the case on Schengen yeah. okay. or Europe. But on defense, on migration, and, so on. and for me, the core of this Europe, the very inner circle, is an open avant-garde, okay. where we decide to have a much stronger integration and to work very closely together in strategic and economic terms. That's my view. But okay. it's not to just to strengthen. Let me move on, if I may, and, sure, and, and ask, you about, ask you about France. More sovereignty, specific. more unity, more democracy. That's the recipe in order to succeed in Europe. If you lose your sovereignty and okay. you don't protect people, they don't believe in you. If you are not based on a democratic approach, they will not follow you. If you are not following this unity, i.e. creating consistency okay. uh, and convergence, they will leave. You said France is back. What did you mean by that? I mean that we are delivering reforms which seemed impossible for decades. That's it. So you, you we, talk, reform, you, we fix a series of, 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 of internal sure. difficulties and you, we increase our capacity to produce and be competitive. This is, for me, the pillar because when you are not credible at home, okay. no chance to be credible outside. You talk about values which must involve presumably freedom of the press and human rights and so forth. Did you raise those with the, the Chinese president when you were talking to him last I week? rose with all the leaders I met and, and, and that's why because I, I, I do what this did you say to you? I do this job in France in order to relaunch Europe for, for you to understand the, the full picture. The job we make in France is good for France. We will, I'm sure, in the coming years improve our figures in terms of employment reduce our deficits and so on. That's it. It allows me to be more credible at the European level and convince, especially Germany, to work together to relaunch this new Europe. And third, it allows us to be more credible at the international scale on different uh, subjects, on different topics, taking yeah. the leadership on climate change, okay. against climate change, on Lebanon and several issues. On human rights, can I, can I, I always raise... on climate change, just since you mentioned it? I just wanted to... Very quickly, so... No, on, on human rights, so taking, taking this, uh, uh, this part, I raised human rights directly with all the leaders. In China, it's absolutely counterproductive to raise it during a press conference. Because, I mean, the political system, the regime, presidency is, I mean, not in a situation, in a current, I mean, in an environment... It's not going to help, you think? I, I do believe it's totally counterproductive. Okay. So what I did is I had a direct discussion. We have a track to discuss this issue. We've, we decided an organization and I provided, I would say, visibility and, and, and the, the ability for him to be sure that this is not a, a diplomacy in front of the camera. So okay. that's it. It's different when I speak with President Erdogan because we had hours of discussion on human rights and specific situations. But let, I issued a very clear statement. Let me ask you, if I may, about that. yet another leader and wonder what you thought when you got up in the morning and read what President Trump, I can't say the word, had said about certain African countries, S-hole countries. He denies it, but he's, a lot of people say he used that word. And among the African countries who were outraged and very offended by that were many Francophone countries, many French-speaking countries in Africa. I wonder, did you share their outrage? For sure. So For sure, it's not a word you can use. And, 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 and if we want precisely to build peace, development in this country and a respectful relationship... You can't use those kind of words. But by definition, and I think a lot of our issues in both in the Middle East and in Africa is due to a lot of frustrations, due to a lot of humil past humiliation. And, and, and we have to understand that. And, and I do believe that we need, we have to respect all the countries. Mm. That's, are, are that's what we owe them and, and, that's, and, 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 and that's much more efficient. So I have a very direct relationship with President Trump. We have a very good relationship. You sat down with him for dinner at the top of sure. the Eiffel Tower. I wonder what you make of him as a person, having come across him closely. Look, I, I think he's... A, he is not a classical politician. So he, first of all, he was elected by the American people. Mm -hmm. He is a president of the United States. And, and that's a great country and that's a great league. So I want to work with him and I think we built a very strong relationship. We disagree on several topics. Sure. Uh, 
I call him very regularly. I am always extremely direct and frank. He is. Sometimes I manage to convince him. And sometimes sometimes I fail. Do you, do you wake up in the morning thinking, what has he tweeted this night? No. Uh, no, because I, I think we should not overplay the situation uh, and, 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 and the tweets. Because that's, I, that's I, I'm sorry, of, I'm asking that, you. That's I'm a not. sort of, 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 of mix between personal and political reaction. And I think it's not feasible when you're president of, of a republic like the US Republic, but to, like to, re the French to respond ones. too much like that. But the reason I'm asking, with a slight smile on my face, but it is very, very serious. We've got something like the North Korean situation. When Trump basically says, my nuclear button's bigger than your nuclear button, a lot of people in the world think this is just slightly unhinged and very dangerous. Yes, but the best answer you can provide to that is what? Just to say, we have to work very closely and seriously to force North Korea to come back to the table of negotiations. Mm. We have to follow the UN sanctions and implement them. And, and the, critical, the critical country in order to deliver is China. Absolutely. And that's, that's what we discussed with President Xi. And so talking about bringing countries back. It's just back, calm down everybody. Do you think that there is any chance at all of persuading the Americans to come back to the table on the Paris Climate Change Agreement? Uh, first of all, I, I, I don't think there is any option to come back to the table of negotiations to the Paris Agreement. I've always been very clear. It's negotiated and signed. It's just deciding to sign what is, what is done. Why? Because to we sign have... it then? But, I mean, we can? negotiated. Mm. 100 and more than 180 countries signed and are being ratifying. Mm. Uh, come on, we will not renegotiate for one people. So, I do believe that's a big mistake. Fine. I told him, but there is no new negotiation. You okay. join or you don't join. China decided to, to remain in the loop and, and we will deliver. I think we, we have to accelerate. But what I see is that private sector and okay. states in the US are following this line. They are trying to comply with the agreement. So we will do it. I think that's a mistake, but there will be no renegotiation, but I hope an option to join the right. treaty as negotiated. Very final question. You said you were going to be a Jupiter-like president. What did you mean by that? I, I think I, I never used like that this expression. Okay. Uh, when, when I was uh, asked, but you know how it functions mm. and people just capture one word and, and, and take it without the context. I think I was just commentating the, 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 the full context, but my point was just to say, when you preside, you have to preside, it's different from governing, and you have to be to avoid permanent comments, to avoid a sort of day-to-day -day presence without strong decisions. You have to have a bit of elan, a bit of gloire. I, I, I would not say that exactly <laughs> uh, following that. You need efficiency, authority, humanity. So that's why the this, this third pillar is not compatible with the Jupiter. Uh, or, uh, 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 or anything of this, okay. uh, of this kind. But, but what's important to me and the message I want to say is that our credibility is to explain what we want to do, to deliver, to change the country, to prepare the country to the new centuries. That's what we are doing in France because that's a precondition to succeed in Europe. And our role in this world is to help everywhere to build peace. That's it. That's my job. President Macron, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thanks very much.